All right, so it's about time I did apple juice. You know, my kids love apple juice, and they give apple juice in at the school. So here we have an assortment of apple juices. We got the sun cup right in the middle there. That is the juice actually from the school lunches in Irvine. Uh, my son snagged one for analysis here. Uh, so that is the uh, that is the you know public school system in California's lunch apple juice, which is I think going to be really telling. Uh, and then we have like a lot of the big brands, and so clearly it, it, you know Martinelli's is up there on the highest pedestal. That's that's the best stuff. And uh, you know I got that. This is the Northwest Blend Sparkling Cider, kind of a leftover from the New Year celebration. Uh, and then this Treetop. Treetop seems to be the big brand. Uh, but at the high-end big brand. And so I got both Treetop and the Treetop Honeycrisp Cider. So we can see the difference between cider and juice. And then the low-end brand, which is just like the Signature Select. I think this is like the Albertsons, the Albertsons Signature brand. This is just the regular apple juice, like like the cheapest. And so we'll go ahead and uh, dig into these apple juices. It should be an easy method uh, and uh, pretty easy analysis. The Irvine Public School System is giving out to elementary school kids, no sugar added, 100% juice, but then juice from concentrate with added ingredients. And it looks like the added ingredients are natural flavors and citric acid. I mean, I understand the citric acid, but the natural flavors, why add natural flavors when it's already naturally flavored? And while we're at it, we're going to test all these other juices. We got the Treetop Cider, the Martinelli's, that's the sparkling, uh, the Signature Brand Apple Juice, and the Treetop Apple Juice. Everybody's 100% juice. Ain't nobody saying, I'm not using 100% juice. They're all 100% juice, yet they all look different, they taste different. Alright. I mean, it's a little suspicious that they all say 100% apple juice, so let's do a little bit of this one here. Come on, guy. There it is. And then the rest of these, we'll just do them in order here. The rest of these, we'll just do them in order. And then we're gonna do a 5X dilution. Pretty boring, spit them out. All right, so here we go. We got the data off the Zevo QTOF, and we got all the different apple juices. And the biggest thing that I'm seeing in the beginning here, you can see they, they do look very similar. Uh, is there's this kind of a blobby looking peak. You can see I've extracted it out on top here. It says 545 or 735. Uh, this is some released sugar. So the thing that I'm interested in apple juice is why are some, they all say 100% juice, but why are some sweeter uh, than others? Uh, and what are they doing to remain 100% juice without any sugar added, yet they all kind of taste different in sweetness. And so uh, that's the use of these enzymes called pectinases. So pectinases uh, don't have to be reported because they're used in kind of the pressing of the apples and they're kind of, uh, they rupture the apple fruit cell walls and break down the pectin. Uh, but that releases sugar. So this mass at 545 is that released pectin sugar um, anything, and they're going to be a bunch of different sugars, but anything with this uh, galacturonic acid conjugate uh, is going to be part of pectinase chains. And so these Gal-A uh, chains from pectin uh, are kind of like your signature biomarker from uh, the use of pectinase uh, in the processing and the roll smashing of apples. So you can think they got all these apples coming in, uh, and then uh, if you want the most amount of juice and the most amount of sweetness, uh, you're going to change the amount of pectin that you use. And so I think the control in this situation uh, is the cider. So the reason the cider isn't clear uh, is the pectinase, the use of pectinase provides the clarifying effect. If you have non-broken down pectin, which is kind of like an insoluble fiber, which is probably good for you, um, then you won't have this mass here. And so you can see the good thing is the control, the cider there, uh, if we look at the EIC here, this is the extracted uh, mass, the, the cider has the least uh, intensity, and then the sun apple juice, the one from the school system, uh, has the most, and so that, that's kind of cool. Um, and, and pretty much all the juices are high, but the Martinelli's is actually the lowest. Okay, so the next thing that we're looking at is this mass at, uh, right in the early portion. This is where all the like organic acids come off, and so we're seeing uh, 191, which could either be uh, citric acid or it could be quinic acid. So apples contain quinic acid, uh, and citric acid is added as a preservative. 
But the mass that I'm interested in is the one at 175. And there's only two juices. The signature brand apple juice, which is the cheapest stuff, and the Martinelli's are the only two with this 175 mass. And that's actually ascorbic acid, vitamin C. And so you're like, okay, I kind of want vitamin C in there. In my opinion, I'd say, you know, if you're having juice, you might as well spike in some vitamin C because it's so beneficial. So anyways, I like that there's vitamin C in the Martinelli's. Okay, so the last mass here I'm looking at is this 435 mass. This is called Forazin. This is a molecule. Um, it's really cool. It's kind of signature to apples and pears and fruit. And it is in the bark of the fruit trees, um, but it's also really enriched in the skin of the fruit. And so when they are smashing apples, they're not peeling them first. So this Florazin uh, is going to be elevated. And this is actually uh, a way you could, if you had like a big database to figure out which apples, because some apples are high in Florazin, some apples are low in Florazin. I think green apples are the highest. And so uh, if you're using kind of green apples to make your apple juice, uh, then you're going to have higher Florazin content. Uh, than whether or not you're like using golden delicious apples, uh, they'll have lower amounts. And I think this has like kind of a, it does have actually kind of like a flavor to it. Um, it's kind of kind of an interesting molecule. So, uh, you know, kind of in recap, uh, I think I'm liking this Martinelli's the best. So, you know, you'd expect Martinelli's to be the best uh, because they're using the least amount of pectinase, it seems, but they still are spiking in vitamin C uh, and they have lots of floors. And so it's definitely uh, good, honest apples, but there's so many peaks in here. I really need to maybe do a second second part where I dig into the apple juices more. Um, pretty cool stuff.